to rethink your legacy, guys. Today, oh my gosh, we got another executive order shutting things down. Schools are delayed. My kids are pissed off. They were so excited to go back to school. This is the one year that my kids were going to be excited to go to school. That's not really true. They're excited every year. Welcome to Rethink Your Legacy. This is a conversation designed to help you live out your family's values before you leave the world, right? This is your host, Francisco Servent, attorney and problem solver at law. I'm the founder of Keystone Law Firm, a really awesome firm in Chandler, Arizona, where we take care of helping people protect their legacies, plan their estates, and then also carry all their wishes out. These are tough things to talk about. And, you know, being a governor in a state that's having to make orders like this, he's got to make some tough decisions. I don't know if I agree with all of them, but uh, that's what it means being a leader, and that's what uh, what we're called to do every day with our family. So, you know, as I was thinking about today, I really set up my topic to be all about the financial dangers that I see happen mostly to widows because we we help a lot of our female women clients who are just struggling with that. When that order came down, putting us back in restrictions, I just thought, what the heck, man? How are we supposed to plan our futures? Like, how are we supposed to get out? What are we doing tomorrow? What are we doing next week? I want to plan some things with my my team. I want to plan some trips with my kids. And and we can't. Like, life just feels so uncontrolled right now. It just, it just made it real for me again through this whole pandemic that, you know what, we can't control everything. And one of the things that we can control as somebody who is who who has family values that we're committed to, you know what, we can take care of some of the business we need to take care of for our families. And that's what we need to do. You know what, the last time that I met with a gal who was just absolutely destroyed over the financial mess that she was left in when her husband passed away, uh, it, it really just crashed down on me. What what an obligation we have as men, as husbands, as spouses to take care of our wives, to take care of our families. We have to plan for the unexpected, right? This, all this pandemic stuff, completely unexpected. Well, guess what? You know what we can count on? We can count on life throwing us some curveballs. Have any of you guys experienced some curveballs? Yeah, you know, we all have. But we have to plan for that. We just have to pick our heads up, march forward and say, you know what? I'm not going to just say, they'll figure it out when I'm gone. No, that's not who we are. We are people who believe our families need, you know, we should do the right thing. So, you know what? That's what we're going to stick. I'm going to stick with that topic that I want to make sure that the women that are out here listening to this, that you know, you've got some tools that you can take care of your financial dangers, that you don't need to be at risk. And hey, if you're not a widow, if you're still married, if you're you're still together, then you can do these things now. And guess what, guys, husbands, you can do these things now to prepare for it so that when the unexpected happens, it's not a big giant mess on top of the sadness, right? That's what we don't want. My dad, he was raised by his widow mom. And, 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 and his dad died when he was only six or seven years old. They had six kids in their family. My grandma, she's here left with six kids, all little kids. And, you know, my uncle, my oldest uncle had to drop out of school at, I think, 12. So he could go get a job. So he could start bringing in some money. My, my grandma, she, she becomes a seamstress. She becomes a house cleaner, does whatever she has to, to make sure that her family has food on the table every day and that they have a place, a safe place to live. And you know what? That's, that's why this is important. We can't just ignore this stuff. There are easy things to do. That's what we're going to talk about today. Because if you've ever wondered, you know, if you're in that retirement stage of life where you're close to retirement or you're in retirement, maybe you're thinking, you know, gosh, am I ever going to run out of money here? Right? That's a big one. It's not like, I mean, you're, you've stopped accumulating we're going to talk about that. Uh, what, have you ever wondered, are you going to become that burden on your own children? There's a lot of people we talk to. I mean, I talk to every day who are in their 50s or 60s, and they're having to start to make financial 
plans for their parents. They're trying to they're trying to figure out how am I going to pay mom and dad's bills? How am I going to pay mom's bills? How are we going to pay dad's bills? Because you know they've run out of money and and not only pay their bills, but I've got to coordinate medical and I've got to coordinate healthcare and I've got to coordinate uh, just the the enormity of it all. Are are have you ever wondered how that's going to play out for you? What about taxes? Ugh, my gosh, I hate taxes. Try to avoid all the taxes I can. How are taxes, you know, are they just going to wipe out your IRA when you go to need it? What about your 401k? Maybe you've got some annuities tucked in different places. Have you really figured out if you're just going to lose, bam, 30% of those off the top? Or are you going to be able to leverage the whole 100% of those to take care of you? It's a big difference. Or will your health or, or your health care, will it completely destroy your golden years. I mean, th- that's what we're going to cover today. That's what we're going to talk about. I, I, I just, th- this is what we're going to stick with because this is what I hear people are confused about. Now, if you're chomping at the bit for, for help and, and you're just like, I can't wait till, uh, to wait to call Francisco. I, I need help. My mom is going through this right now and we're taking care of her business, her affairs. She's bleeding money left and right on, on healthcare and long-term care, or you're, you're at that stage and you know what, you, you are a widow and you're just wondering, my gosh, am I financially secure? What's going to happen when I really need help? I don't want to be a burden on my kids. Then just jump, grab your phone, jump on dial 480-750-7788. That is our direct phone number. Look, our team will call you back first thing in the morning to just see how we could help. Uh, or you can jump on radio.keystonelawfirm.com, uh, shoot an email over to radio at keystonelawfirm.com, message us on Facebook, send a comment on YouTube. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. So my grandma's story with my dad, I, I sort of grew up with that story as a reality. That was just kind of one of our historical ancestry stories that I knew about. It didn't all the gravity of what she went through didn't really hit me until I was already an estate planning attorney and and I'm working with lots of clients, you know, either preparing their stuff or they've had a family member, a husband, a wife, a parent, you know, uh, start to need help and I'm helping them go through that process. It didn't hit me until we were starting to work with this one gal who just, it, it surprised me how young this can affect some couples. But this was in their 50s, her and her husband. Actually, we're quite successful. He was a, he was a, a, a businessman uh, type, just, you know, rose up the ranks, helped grow some businesses and in the tech industry. But he also served our country in the military way, way, way back when and uh, found out that because of something he was exposed to there, he actually developed some early, early onset of dementia in his late 50s. And uh, they got that diagnosis and were just crushed. Uh, you know, it comes on in small incremental. It shows up in small places at first. And a couple things happened. They went to the doctor and got some testing done. And, and the doctor said, yeah, this is, this is early stage dementia. You're you know, you've got a long road ahead of you where this is just going to get worse. And you know what? I know some of you are actually in the middle of that right now. We, we, I hear you. I know, I, I know what my clients say who are struggling with that, either with a spouse or a parent, and it doesn't matter what age you're dealing with it. I have some clients that are dealing with it at, at 50. Some clients are dealing with it at 90. Um, it's so painful and I get that. So you're not alone. Number one, I just want you to know you're not alone. There are a lot of really good support groups. There's a lot of places to get help. Call my office, jump on our website. I'd love to get you plugged in with those. You're not alone trying to take care of this. Um, but in this example, she, you know, they, they got all their affairs in order right when the doctor declared his dementia. And then they went on with life. And it t- took about 10 years until he had to give up work entirely. And at that point, their documents, their legal plan, their estate plan, their will, their trust, everything, it was too old. And she ended up completely having to go through the court system. And we're going to, I'm going to tell you that story here in just a minute. 
we're going to cover your income as a widow. We're going to cover your investments as a widow. We're going to cover what to make sure you've done to care for yourself and make sure you don't get exploited in those most vulnerable years. So if you need help, please, please just call. We're not going to sell you something. We're just going to help you. 480-750-7788. Shoot us an email, radio at keystonelawfirm.com, or you can jump on the website at uh, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Send us an email, jump on Facebook, whatever. We will plug you in with the right resources. If you need our help, your first step will be a really comfortable, no pressure appointment that we're doing all of these by phone or video calls. And in some cases in the office, though we are really trying to be protective about that right now, just for your help, your safety, and my team's safety. So give us a call. That first appointment is a discovery hour where you're going to discover the issues that are facing what your goals are. You're going to help us understand that. And then we will clearly lay out what some options are, right? You want to get some clarity around what kind of services, benefits, help is even available. And then we'll map that out for you and make it as clear as day so you can know exactly what you need to do. You are welcome to bring your family, your spouse, your adult children, the one that you trust or all of them. It's up to you. We are happy to help. 480-750-7788. Keystone Law Firm, happy to be here. Join us back after the break. Welcome back, guys, to Rethink Your Legacy. Francisco Servent here, your host, attorney and problem solver at law. You know what? With 4th of July past us, and now we're kind of looking back on what the heck happened this 4th of July. It's like a 4th of July from the Twilight Zone, totally different. If you if you were part of our first show Uh, A couple weeks ago, you heard my little story of being a rebellious teenager. I really felt like rebelling again this year on 4th of July. I just want to bust out the fireworks and go throw a big giant party. But, you know, we can't rebel against that. Uh, It is what it is. We got to be safe. I hope you guys are staying safe out there. What we're talking about today is your is the financial dangers that face widows. My my grandmother raised all of her six kids as a widow. Her husband passed away when my dad was only six years old, and she raised six kids in this teeny tiny little apartment. And it just, I'm just forever amazed and grateful, honestly, for the kids that she produced out of that. My dad is just an incredibly honorable guy, and he's, he's part of how, why I am what I am. Even though I did rebel a little bit as a kid, I probably got that from him too. As a widow, This first topic I want to dig into is your income. Once you're in that retirement phase of life, you might just want to throw up your hands and rebel against all of your income and say, I need more. But honestly, we get it. It's fixed. Your income is fixed at that point. You can't rebel against it. So here we go. We got to dig into this and figure out how are you not going to run out of money? The the worst scenarios that I've seen were ones where a, and I'm going to blame us guys. We're usually the first to go. We, you you know, come on, we got to be the ones, you know, I know my wife, my wife actually manages our day-to-day budget, our month-to-month budget. She makes sure we're on budget, but I take a lot of responsibility. And I think all of us should in making sure our spouses are provided for. And I just, it breaks my heart when I, when I run across stories where we had one where a gal came to us as her as her husband was in long-term care and they were spending a ton of money every month that stuff can get pretty expensive she when she came to me they had almost spent all of their money i mean it was four or five thousand dollars a month they had a little bit of social security they had literally gone through almost their entire nest egg by the time she came to my office. And at that point, the money's gone. There's not much I can do to help. I explained to her, we could have helped a lot if you would have come a couple years ago, but she didn't. And he was literally going to leave her completely broke. And she had uh, some kids who were there to support her, but they didn't have the financial means to, you know, to completely support her at a lifestyle that was comfortable and safe and secure. And it just breaks my absolute heart. My own grandmother, she, when she passed away, or not when she passed away, when my grandfather passed away, when my dad was only six, he actually left my grandma with a a little nest egg. He 
I don't know what it was because I, my dad was only six, but it was enough money that should have been able to take care of them for the rest of her life. But what ended up happening was she, at least so the story goes, she took that money and basically invested it with a uh, cousin who was as well-meaning as they come, but lost every dollar. And she had to com- she had to just completely go back to work to support her kids. Um, I it, it just breaks my heart. There are things you can do to make sure you have enough income to support yourself, no matter what happens in the future. So the first piece of income that we see all the time is Social Security. Social Security is the backstop. It's it's intended to be, and I believe it should be, just your fail-safe. It should not be your main source of income. If it's your main source of income, I hope you maxed it out, and I hope you've got everything paid off. I hope your living expenses are incredibly low. Social Security was intended to be a backstop, and that's what I believe it should be. Now, what happens if you're in retirement already and that's your only piece of fixed income? Then you've got to dig in and see what other resources you have, okay? I just was reminded of the story of Colonel Sanders who started uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. If you haven't read that story, you got to read it. He basically was an abject failure from a financial perspective until his retirement years. He literally just kept losing money. I think his family left him. The guy... Nobody, you know, he was, she just lost. I mean, he lost big time, but then, then broke and with nothing left in his sixties, his late sixties, he said, what can I do? I can do something. And he knew he could make fried chicken <laughs> and he turned it into a multi, multi, uh, a million, maybe billion dollar, uh, company and retired as wealthy as can be. So I'm not saying go out and start a job, but you've got, you've even got some resources in your own mind to f- help figure this out. Now, our firm, what we do, we do the estate planning, wills and trusts and things like that. Our sister company, they do the financial planning. So they figure this stuff out and how you're going to pull these different pieces. Because Social Security, there's three types really that affect clients who we deal with. And that's the retiree benefit, the spousal benefit, and the survivor's benefit. Now, for widows, the one we look at and we see is most often relevant is the survivor's benefit. What that means is that Whatever, so if both you and your your husband are getting Social Security, whichever one of you gets the higher amount, that's what you will get uh, if and when you become a widow. So, you know, for example, me and my wife, if I'm getting $1,000 a month off of my Social Security record and she's getting 500 a month off Social Security, then I pass away, she'll get mine, she'll lose hers. So she'll just get the $1,000 a month. That's what the survivor's Social Security benefit does. So you've got to plan that number in there to know your income is going to to drop by that amount. So where else can you get it from? Well, you're going to be looking at, you know, what other pensions do you have? And then most people uh, are turning to IRAs, 401ks, their stock brokerage accounts, and if they have any annuities. Uh, If you have a real estate portfolio with some investments that are producing rental income, that's obviously another place that it'll come from. All of these things tied together, though, are a a moving target in a lot of respects, right? Because think about how many different pieces of the puzzle you have. If you want help figuring out what all those pieces are, call us, 480-750-7788 or go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com. We've actually created a free checklist for this week that you can download right there on the financial dangers that no one really talks about when you're a widow. Get that free checklist. Make sure you review it with your family and see what makes sense for you. Give us a call, 480-750-7788, and we're happy to help you figure it out. One of the things we give all of our clients is called a free retirement map, and it's just a great way to look at the whole tax picture, the whole you know income, how's that affecting it, and then all of your investments. Can you pull from this bucket, that bucket? Can you move things around to really maximize what you've got based on the expenses and the long-term projections? Now, one of the things that we do deal with is we, is we want you to look at, is I, I think you should look at if you have IRAs, 401ks, or taxable annuities, I want you to think about those for a minute, okay? There's a lot of potential in there to take care of you. 
but there's also a lot of potential taxes in there that can, I mean, destroy your financial security. I had, we had a husband who passed away and he didn't name the beneficiary correctly on his IRA. Now, if you've got an IRA, hopefully you're familiar with naming the beneficiary and you probably have named some backup beneficiaries. You know, maybe it's spouse first and the kids second or something like that. Well, he, I don't know what happened. He didn't name anybody. And when he passed away, a lot of times when you don't name anyone on your, as your beneficiary, guess what? There's no beneficiary. Now, it doesn't mean it all goes to the state, but it does mean that the tax consequences are completely different, totally different. Here's what it means. It can mean that, boom, right at that moment, 30% of that account is going to get sucked off in taxes. 30%. So if you've got $100,000 in there, it's 30 grand. If you've got a million dollars in IRA and you don't have that beneficiary name correctly, it's $300,000, right? So make sure you've got the beneficiary's name correctly to avoid that. That's a huge problem. If you need help with that, give us a call for sure. So what we want to do is we want you to make sure you get these questions answered. All these pieces, they don't just flow together automatically to maximize your security. The first thing is to maximize your income security. Now, if you need help with that, like I said, the first thing you're going to do is call us 480-750-7788 or go to our website, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. The first thing we do with new clients is called a discovery hour. No pressure, really easy appointment. You're just going to go through three things. What are your issues? help us understand your goals, and then we'll lay out the options. Okay, A, B, C, D. Just like I'm talking with you here now, you'll talk with someone on my team during that discovery hour, and they'll help you figure out what those options are. The last thing I want you to do is leave that meeting confused. I commit to you, you will leave that meeting with more clarity than you come in with. And that's the goal, right? Is that you walk away with some clarity about what your income needs are so that you can have some financial security around that. After the break, stick around because we're going to talk about investments and your stocks, your bonds, your investments in your IRAs. I'm going to teach you some important things you know, need to know about the incredible commissions that get paid to financial advisors out there. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We got some, you know, the next thing here is investments. I'm not going to give you investment advice. I'm not going to pick some stocks for you. I'm going to share with you some crazy things that I learned because the last thing I want is for this financial danger to completely devastate the widows who are out there because there's enough to struggle with. Life is completely different as a widow. And I just don't want you to be taken advantage of on your investments. You and your husband, you worked hard to save. You guys were frugal. I know my clients. You guys lived so frugally. You haven't learned how to spend that money in your retirement. I get it. Well, here's some. Here's the story of how I first learned just the insanity of that business. Um, I I shared with you on on a couple of the shows how our firm, Keystone Law Firm, we have a sister company, Keystone Wealth Partners. We're in the same building. We we just offer the whole three-legged stool package, right? Your estate planning, your financial planning, and your tax planning all under one roof. I met, and John Hagenson is the founder of Keystone Wealth Partners. Now, how I met John is actually a funny story. I was working at another law firm, and one of the employees she was a client or is a client of John's. And she said, wow, Francisco, you guys should meet. You'd hit it off. And so we actually got introduced by a a gal who was an employee of mine, but a uh, client of his. So as an estate planning attorney, I have spent, or by that time I had spent, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 years, something like that, meeting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of financial advisors because it was really good business for me to get referrals from financial advisors. And so he kind of just got added to my list. I'm going to go meet John. Can you imagine having to meet hundreds and hundreds of financial advisors? If you are listening and you were one of the advisors that I met, I hope uh, we're still in touch. If we're not, 
I apologize. And you know what? We should get back in touch. But it is a lot of work. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes that was basically just a sales pitch from the financial advisor. When I met with John, it was a completely different experience. He, we sat down and I said, all right, I threw up my hands. All right, what do you do? Tell me what you do. And thinking I'm going to get a sales pitch. And what I, John told me a story. He told me this, or not necessarily a story. He told me an example. He said, there's a huge problem in my industry. He said, I'm a, I'm a financial advisor. I've been trained by some of the best. I'm consistently top ranked in my industry. I'm, I'm throwing it all away and going in different direction because the industry is so broken. And I was like, oh, what, what do you mean? You know, kind of, I've always thought it was, but I didn't know enough. So, you know, he tells me the story of how he was raised in the industry and did, I mean, he's an honorable guy. He did his best to help his clients and he did a good job to help his clients, but he told me how the industry works. And one of the, there's, there's a couple big things that are still, uh, still present in that industry that are just completely broken. One of them is how a lot of advisors are paid. And you'll, you know, on, on 550 KFY, you'll hear lots of financial advising and lots of advice about, you know, uh, from, from a lot of great hosts here. And I, and I just love that this education is getting out there, including John. He has a Rethink Your Money radio show that you can tune in and listen to every week. The story he told me is that a lot of financial advisors are actually paid by the stock that they sell. So if, if a client goes in and says, all right, I've got, I'm, I'm ready to retire. I've got this, you know, I've, I, I've saved and scrimped and been frugal and I've saved, I don't know, a million bucks over the course of my career. I've got some in the 401k, some in an IRA, some in a Roth, some in just a stock account. Here it is. What do I do with it? A traditional financial advisor will come back with a set of recommendations and then the client will invest in those companies or those mutual funds or whatever it is. And those mutual funds or those companies pay the advisor a commission. You know, it's like a finder's fee. It's like 5%, 8%. Some are really a lot higher, but they're all over the board. And so, because if you, if you haven't paid your advisor for the advice just out of your own pocket, how do they have that beautiful building and that beautiful car and, and the second and third and fourth home, you know, those things are getting paid for somewhere. So it's being paid by the companies that are being invested in. Huh? So John gave me this example. He said, can you imagine if you went to your doctor, you were sick, you had something wrong and the doctor did a whole workup, blood work, x-rays, MRI, CAT scan, and then came back to you and said, all right, here's what I recommend. We're going to do this treatment and that treatment followed by this therapy and these drugs and whatever. You're, you're taking that as his professional advice that is in your best interest, is going to be the best way to get you healthy, and, and that it, it just is the best thing for you, right? Well, what if those companies were sticking $100 and $1,000 bills in his back pocket if he recommended prescription drug A versus prescription drug B, and he didn't tell you, would that, do you think that would cloud his judgment? Look, if you think your advisor is being paid commissions on the back end, I invite you to call us and, and let us find out. We can tell you just by looking at your portfolio, 480-750-7788 or radio.keystonelawfirm.com because you can download this week's free checklist which will tell you exactly how we do that for you. And I want you to get that information. Because if they are being paid based on what they recommend, the doctor is not giving you objective advice. Well, same thing in the financial services industry. And there was a big push just recently in the last few years to require all financial advisors to be fiduciaries. And it failed though there are more growing, right? The industry is, is maybe 10% of them are fiduciaries. That's what John and Keystone Wealth Partners are. I invite you to have a conversation with them about that. Um, 
So I asked John, I said, well, yeah, that makes sense. That's, that's obviously going to create all kinds of conflicts of interest. If I'm a financial advisor and I've got 3,000 stock companies behind me saying, sell our stock, no, sell our stock. And some of them are offering me a 2% commission. Some of them are offering me a 10% commission. It's going to affect my professional judgment. It just is. I have, I have a wife, I have kids, you know? So I asked him, I said, okay, if that's not the right way to get your advice, what is the right way? And what's the right way to do invest? How, how can I tell my clients to go get financial security? And he said, you know what? It's pretty simple. He said, you just, you, you need to work. Number one, work with somebody who is a licensed fiduciary, not a stock broker. Okay. That, that rep, that sales rep who you aren't paying, they're being paid commission. So he said, work with a fiduciary. Second, make sure they are credentialed. They got some kind of credentials behind them. They didn't just walk out the door, you know, bachelor's degree in finance, hang up a shingle that says financial advisor. Make sure they've got some credentials, some kind of master's work, some kind of um, a PhD, something maybe the CFP or CHFC. I mean, some kind of credentials that shows they know what they're talking about. And, and, and ask them the question, am I paying you or are you paying commissions, right? That's going to put you at the best chances of success with your financial security. Because really what it is, the stock market just is what it is. We've all seen it go up and down and up and down. And recently it's an example of the, of the market correction cycle. Um, over the long term, it's up. If you look at it in 10-year periods, it's just up, right? And that's what, that's what I believe is the, the purpose of the stock market. It's for your long-term money. It's not for short-term gains, right? It's for long-term investments. And so you want to just get a broad diversification there and then stick to your guns as you go through life because that's going to give you financial security. Making decisions on an emotional basis is just absolutely not going to do that. So you want to work with somebody who's going to hold you disciplined to that long-term strategy, help you figure out what pieces of income you should take from what different buckets and how your taxes are going to be impacted through all of that because you don't want to lose a big chunk of it, uh, 30% to taxes when you could just be using that to improve or maintain your lifestyle. So now if you need help, I want you to think about this. You've got, you've got some options, right? You could just dig in, research, and, 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 and figure it out on your own. You could get on the internet and start Googling and reading. And, and like, if you're anything like me, I mean, it's like almost instant paralysis. There's just too much information a lot of times. And so many times on the internet, it's just somebody trying to sell you something or give us a call. We'll make it simple for you. Uh, everything that we do is completely transparent. The way that the law firm is paid, the way that the financial, that wealth partners is paid, it's all completely transparent and we make it very easy. There's never any pressure or anything like that. If it's a good fit for you, great. If it's a good fit for us, we'll let you know. And the way you get started there is by calling 480-750-7788. Or you can jump on our website, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. You can also email us, radio at keystonelawfirm.com. Jump on Facebook, send us a message, shoot us a comment on our Facebook, vi uh, on our Facebook video or YouTube video, and we'll be happy to help. My team will get back to you first thing in the morning as soon as they can. And we'll figure out what, you know, what makes sense for you, right? If it's not something we can help you with, we'll certainly let you know. But if it is, I want you to come in and take advantage of it. Now, check back with us after the break because we're going to pick up the topic of making sure you don't get exploited as a widow. Welcome back to Rethink Your Legacy. I'm Francisco Servent, founder of Keystone Law Firm. And we're talking about the financial dangers that no one really talks about for widows. It gets scary. Life is completely different. We've got a free checklist based on today's topic that you can jump on our website and download. And it'll give you some tips and some talking points for your family. And I hope it prompts some discussions that help you plan so that you don't face these dangers that we've been talking about. This last one that I want to talk about is maybe the hardest one. Um, <laughs> being taken care of and being taken advantage of. There's These are just such hard things that nobody wants to talk about, but it's some of the biggest, some of the things that I have heard people are so worried about, and it does, it, it gets scary. We have had so many people that we've talked to. We had a gal who 
she was she came to us to first talk about taking care of her mom. Her mom had Alzheimer's and in the midst of taking care of her mom and figuring that out, just barely figuring that out, bam, her dad was hit and he had an emergency critical medical event that took him to the hospital and now she has both parents that are needing complete help and care and oh my gosh, I I, honestly, I cannot personally imagine that. My parents are still healthy and traveling and I've seen my parents have to, or I don't know, have to, but I've seen them provide care for their parents and it, and I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of families do it. And it is, it's exhausting. This, we, I just found this report the other day. Statistics are coming out showing that 60% of the time, 60% of the time, it's the caregiver who actually passes away first, not their loved one. Oh my gosh, that's devastating. So this gal, she's taking care of now mom and dad. And, and she's got little kids of her own. And, you know, that is the classic sandwich generation example. It, it's exhausting. And she's trying to work and she's trying to take care of her kids. She's trying to love her husband, but she has just worked to the bone. And, and it's just, it, it, when if the ducks aren't all in a row, you end up with what happened to her, you know, thousands of dollars going out a month for mom's care thousands of dollars going out a month for dad's care and just watching their nest egg, no matter how big it is, when you're bleeding out at 10, 15, $20,000 a month, you're going to, you're going to wipe out a nest egg in no time. And that's what was happening to her parents. Every single month she's writing these checks. Now she came to us in time to preserve some of their money, but uh, had had she come to us earlier, you know, that we would have been able to protect all of it. So there are two big benefit programs that can help pay for those. You're either going to have to qualify for one of those government benefits or two, you're going to have to pay for this on your own out of your own nest egg or three, you could, um, if you are young and healthy enough, you could buy some kind of insurance. There are some insurance policies out there that can pay for long-term care. It doesn't have to be a long-term care insurance policy. There are some life insurance. There are some annuities. There's some really creative things that they've created uh, to solve this problem. So there are, I mean, those are three viable options that I think everybody should consider, right? The government benefits, the paying it for yourself, or an insurance policy. Now, I want to quickly touch on the government benefits. And it's there's one program through the VA And then in Arizona, we have the Medicaid program in Arizona for long-term care. It's called Arizona Long-Term Care System. We shorten, we shorthand that by calling it Altex, okay? Now, if you have some money that's worth protecting and you don't want to spend it all down, you don't want to blow through it, and you're in the mess right now, you've got a family member who's draining your estate right now, give us a call. We've got, there are legitimate good strategies to help you get qualified. 480-750-7788. And my team will help you get started to figure that out. But um, the bigger risk is not doing anything. The average cost of a nursing home in Maricopa County, the last time I checked, which was last year, two years ago, was about $7,000 a month. $7,000 a month not a year. I mean, this is 7,000 a month. You're going to spend 80 some thousand dollars if you have one of these long-term care expenses. So please protect your finances against that. Make sure your, your family isn't going to be responsible for picking up that bill. Just at a party the other day, a gal was telling me that they're, her and her husband are trying to figure out how they're going to pay for mom's long-term care bill at, at five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 a month. Holy cow. Are you budgeting for that for your parents? If if you're not, I, I mean, come in, let's figure it out. There are some good strategies to help get them taken care of. On the other side of this coin though, right? Being taken care of is important. We, we, are, we should be okay with our families 
helping to take care of us. We should be okay with that, right? We shouldn't have so much pride that we are, that we fight that. But on the other side of that coin is being taken advantage of. This happens all too often. And, and most of the time, it either ends up going completely unnoticed, undiscovered, or it's discovered, but nobody can do anything about it because it's too late. When it does get discovered, it's a gigantic, huge, expensive, nightmare, horror story to go through court, the you know getting adult protective services involved. Trying to get that money back is just a absolute impossibility. So the, you want to have some things to protect you ahead of time so that you don't get taken advantage of. There are two big things here that I want to make sure you know about. Your estate plan is a key factor in that. You've got to have the will, the revocable living trust. You got to have the power of attorney and the healthcare power of attorney. There's a few other ones that go with it, but those are the basics, right? You got to put those in place. And as I talk about all the time, stick around for the other shows where we go into more depth, but where we talk about this all the time, they've got to be updated. The second piece is your financial investments. You can't just be in annuities. We were working with a client who was sold way too many annuities and was paying tens of thousands of dollars a year in annuity commissions that were completely inappropriate for them. Do not put all your money in annuities. It is going to eat away at your spending ability. It's going to completely devastate your long-term security. You've got to have a complete financial picture in place. So you've got to have the the legal documents in place and up to date at least once a year. And then you need to have a complete financial picture of how you're going to be Um, making sure you don't run out of money. And it's never, ever too late. Here's how you get started, okay? Our firm, we deal with this every day. We deal with this all the time. We've helped hundreds of families figure this out. Sometimes you have to hire us to help you. Sometimes you don't. We just can point you in a direction, okay? How we do that, whether you're in the mess right now already for yourself, your spouse, or your parents, or if you really, you feel like you want to get ahead of the game on this, good for you. Let's do this while you have more options, okay? Your first step with Keystone Law Firm is a discovery hour. That's where my team will help understand your issues. They'll help understand what your goals are because it, trust me, it's different. We got to spend some time on that. And you don't want us dragging you down towards some goal that you don't even care about. And then third, we'll help you clearly see what your options are. Okay, you just call our office. 480-750-7788. Or go to our website, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Give us an email, radio at keystonelawfirm.com. Jump on Facebook, shoot us a message, jump on YouTube, shoot us a comment, whatever. Just get in touch with us. I've tried to make it as easy as possible. Soon, we will be having some text messages that you can shoot us a text message, but not yet. (laughs) So just call. Leave us a message with your name, your phone number, what's going on, and my team will call you back as soon as we can. We just want to help. We've got lots of people, lots of awesome people in our firm that are here to help. Now, come back next week. What we're going to do next week is we're going to keep digging in on, you know, how to protect your family because your values are to protect your family. And we're going to do that from the perspective of protecting your 18 year olds. You don't want them to inherit a big pile of money, do you? So come back to us next week. Thanks for listening, everybody. 